Can a match box? It all started with a simple question. Not the question I just asked, although we'll get back to that soon. No, the question was, have you played the impossible quiz before? I have. I have, yeah. Question one, how many holes in a polo? The last time I played the impossible quiz, I was really young. I'm talking probably eight or nine years old. And so almost 15 years later, I wanted to see how much of it I could still remember. Apparently, not much. Now you might be thinking, oh, come on dude, a polo shirt has one, two, three, four holes if you don't include however many holes there are for the buttons. So the answer's four, obviously. And you'd actually be right, but not for the reason you think. You see, with the impossible quiz, things are never as they seem. If the answer to a question appears obvious, it's probably not the right answer. The phrase Apollo has four holes in the letters that make it up, hence the answer is four. I, having a vague memory of the nature of the quiz, knew the answer would have some kind of stupid reasoning like this, so I chose two, referring to the big round holes in the two O's. But it turns out all holes are accepted here. Question two. Can a match box? If you knew the answer from the jump, then you're probably familiar with this quiz and totally aware of the complete mental anguish, torment, and heartbreak I was setting myself up for. If you didn't know, then buckle up. You're in for a ride. The answer is no but a tin can. Question three, or should I say task three, because as we'll come to see, not all the questions in this quiz are actual questions. Some just require you to carry out specific actions like this one. Straws cab noitsuk seat rusna, or answer this question backwards. Okay. Task four, I'm told to click the answer, but all the options are out of order. So what do I do? Well, luckily, I remembered this one. You must literally click the answer. And if you thought that was sneaky, brace yourself. The real BS hasn't even begun. Task five, get your cursor from here to here without touching the blue. Very simple, but let's just say it requires some outside of the box thinking. Question six, square root of onion. Now, I must admit, I wasn't entirely sure what shallots were when I boldly proclaimed the root of an onion is uh, shallots, but it got the job done. Turns out shallots are in fact not the roots of onions, but they come from the same family. And if that's good enough for the quiz, it's good enough for me. Question seven, the answer is really big and I'm presented with four honestly quite feasible options. The word answer written so big it exceeds the confines of its box, the words really big, the infinity symbol, which could also double as the mask of a caped crusader, or an elephant. I hear those are pretty big. With only two lives left, four possible answers, and no recollection of the correct answer from my childhood, it was gonna have to be a game of chance. Really big. Ah, oh, I can't remember what this one was. Flipping hell. Game over number one. You see, the tricky thing about this game isn't finding the right answer. It's a multiple choice quiz, for the most part. So you'll find the answer eventually. No, what makes this game so tricky is that with each game over, you must start from the very beginning. Question one, no matter how far in you get. And little did I know, this was gonna take a real toll on me as I got further into the quiz. On my way back to question seven, I ended up losing one of my freshly replenished three lives on the cursor task by accident. No biggie, mistakes happen, but with only two lives left, the margin for error had shrunk. The answer to question seven was an elephant, which is really big, but now I had an even bigger problem. Task eight, search. For what? I didn't know. I found a big red button, so I figured that must be it. I figured wrong. I kept searching and discovered different markings on the blank space, including a green tick. There we go. Question nine. What was the answer to question two? Do you know? Do you even remember what question two was? I'll give you a clue. It was the very first thing I asked in this video. Wait, wait, it was no but a tin can. Ah, what? Game over number two. But wait a minute. The answer was no but a tin can, which was in the bottom left corner. Unless, turns out I was so focused on remembering the question, 
I didn't even pay attention to the answers. The correct answer was in the bottom left, but what's pointing to it? The top right. Task number 10, choose food. Well, none of these looked like food to me. I could imagine someone eating an eyeball. It wouldn't be a pleasant imagination, but I could imagine it. Choose food. Choose food. Oh, okay, okay, like chewing. Teeth, they chew food. Question 11, what follows December 2nd? Now at this point, it's worth noting, I wasn't looking to my stream chat for the answers. I wanted to put my own brain to the test but I did nonetheless get an assist from the viewers a few times over the course of the quiz, so whenever that happens, I'll be sure to let you know. December 3rd was too obvious an answer to be correct, so I went with the more unlikely answer, a question mark, referring to the question mark directly following December 2nd in the question. Oh, uh, maybe December 3rd wasn't too obvious? With one life left, I went 50-50 and chose N. Why is the answer N? It would be a while before I would understand question 11, but I don't want you to have to wait like I did, so I'll just explain it right now. Put simply, N is the second character to follow the word December in the question. It follows December 2nd. Clever, right? Except it's complete bullcrap because according to the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, space also counts as a character. And so technically, Two follows December 2nd, but whatever, I'd made it and I wasn't going to dwell on it. Question 11 isn't even scraping the tip of the iceberg, believe me. Task 12. Click the smallest. I actually remembered this one. What an out of place lowercase letter amongst the all caps typography. Question 13. What sound does a bell make? Well, let's just give another listen to the bell that rings upon getting a correct answer in this quiz. Sounds like a fatang to me. Question 14. What can you put in a bucket to make it lighter? Well, the opposite of lighter could be heavier, but it could also be darker. Let's eliminate that dark with a torch. Task 15. Nay, Winnie. I wasn't sure what it wanted from me, so let's hear my process to see what I was thinking. So like a horse neighing, and then we have every letter of the alphabet. What the flip? Oh, I just checked the freaking. I checked the chat. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, horse, fine. As I mentioned before, this was one of the very few occasions where I was given the answer by the chat. I generally tried to avoid it because, well, it's cheating, isn't it? But soon enough, even cheating wouldn't do much to help me. Question 16. Why is the seventh letter of the alphabet? And if you're counting on your fingers right now, don't bother. The answer is not G. We should be learning by now. If the answer seems obvious, it's the wrong answer. I suspected the game was trying to pull a fast one on me, and so I opted to take a different approach. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But I feel like they're gonna do something stupid, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I knew it! I knew it! I shouldn't celebrate too much though, because as this next question was about to show, I was yet to be entirely privy to the impossible quizzes schemes. 24 minus 7 is 17. Of course it is, but none of the answers match that. The impossible quiz is quite possibly the only thing that could make me answer a simple subtraction question like this. Walrus. <laughs> And just like that, I had my third game over. But did you notice what I should have done? I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. Clearly, neither did I. 16.931, if you round it to the nearest whole number. Okay, fine. Flipping hell, flipping hell. That's a good one. Actually, that's a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it was the question number. And now's a good point for me to let you know, nothing is off limits in this quiz. And I mean nothing. Remember that, it's gonna come back later. Task 18, stop. You mean stop playing? <laughs> Gladly, I still intended to play Horizon Zero Dawn on stream after this, but decided I would beat the quiz first before switching over. Or so I thought. Banana three o'clock, oh wait, House six, 
Hammer 9. Stop hammer time! Let's go! <laughs> Task 19. Color in the correct order. Surely they mean the colors of the rainbow, right? Oh, is this just Void G Biv? Red, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, in Oh, it's already. It's already in the colors of the rainbow. So what else could they mean by correct order? Let's see what I was thinking. Alphabetical. So blue. Oh, orange. Green. Green. Yellow. Okay, fine, fine. What the hell? I was actually doing like alphabetical order of the color names. So I just got lucky there. It seems flawed thinking led me to the correct answer in the end. Thanks, Boggy. Anyone ever tell you you look like a less distinguished Oswald? Question 20. Deal or no deal? Well, I'm in it to win it, so deal, surely. Deal. Oh. <sighs> okay, fine, let's try this again. All I could think of while reading this question was Noel Edmonds. Sorry to my viewers from across the pond, Harry Mandel just wasn't our cup of tea over here. What? What? Seal? I chose seal as a complete guess, and it turns out it's because of the phrase seal the deal. Pretty rubbish reasoning if you ask me, and I wasn't happy with the answer at the time either. Seal! Seal! Why was the answer seal? Why? Why was the answer seal? Did you catch that? I was so caught up in complaining about seal, no, not that one, that I completely missed the hint for the answer to question 21. I was having a great run at this, wasn't I? It's probably a good point to mention that at this time, I had no idea how many questions were actually in the quiz, which is why this chat message was so concerning. No one tell them how many questions there are? What? How many questions are there? I thought it was like 25 or 30. Well, I was in for a world of hurt and I didn't even know it. While reading the chat, I glimpsed that the correct answer to question 21 was top left. I wish it wasn't spoiled, but considering I had no idea that there was a hint I'd even missed, it was probably for the best. Question 22. The choice is yours. Plus one life, minus one life, escape, or plus one skip. I thought it was so generous of the game to let me choose. Yes, I was that naive. You absolute dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> this game was not my friend and it was about time I understood that. Okay, okay, you absolute- Yeah, escape wasn't right either. This quiz wasn't gonna let me go anytime soon. The answer was plus one skip, as in skipping to the next question. I was not amused. Question 23, save changes to untitled? My initial instinct was to go with yes, but look how far my instincts had gotten me so far. No. I'm gonna try one more time, and then I'm, uh, and then we're getting into Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> All right, whatever you say, chief. I tried clicking cancel, but as with canceling many things, it didn't work. Cancel. So I chose bran, thinking of bran flakes, and it was correct. Apparently, the idea is that you need to give a name to your file before you save changes. And so bran was the name given to it. Instead of bran flakes, I should have been thinking of bran stark. Little Game of Thrones reference for those of you who are still traumatized by that ending. Task 24. Hovering my mouse over the colored bars revealed parts of a full sentence. It took me a while to figure it out myself, but with the magic of editing, I can at least make it easier for you. Click the, but I don't, this is just V. V in lives. <laughs> at least I got it eventually. Question 25. How do you kill a werewolf? Sill it bang. Bang and the dirt is gone. As a complete guess, I chose shoe polish and luckily for me, it was right. But why was it right? Well, according to the Impossible Quiz Wiki, shoe polish contains silver nitrate and werewolves are weak against silver, hence the silver bullet. However, I did some Googling of my own to verify this and wasn't able to find a single shoe polish ingredients list that had any mention of silver. Barry Scott may have been more effective against werewolves after all. Remember me, Barry Scott. Question 26, which of these place names doesn't exist? Germans Week, 
Bitchfield, Osfacey, Blubber Houses, Brown Willie, Buds Titson, or Twat. There was only one I genuinely couldn't imagine being the name of a real place. Osfacey. It just seemed too on the nose. Or on the ass, I guess. Question number Huh. I hope you've been paying attention to the question numbers. I had to click which question was supposed to be next. Luckily, my chat came through with an assist, but not in the way you might think. 28. 28. Do you know why I know? Because we got to 25, which some of you were saying was the last question, and it wasn't. And then I answered 26. So this is question 27. So that is actually because you guys lied to me that I know the answer to this question. Honesty may be the best policy, but deception has its perks too. Question 28. What is this? Well, depending on where you're from, you might just call a cupcake a bun. It's a bun dance. Question 29. What flavor is cardboard? Personally, I've never tried it. Have you? What flavor is cardboard? Cardboard. Yes, cardboard, mate. Get on with it. I have no idea what the answer to this question could be. <sighs> I'm trying to think logically. That was my mistake. 29 questions into this quiz, and I still believed logic had anything to do with it. Oh, uh, I'm gonna say pork scratchings. Honey. Game over number six. I said this would be my last go, but my chat was having none of it and encouraged me to keep trying. My boy Reese also came through with a pep talk. Simi, you know the answers deep down. Just go with instinct. Don't overthink it. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> well, sorry Aloy, I'm gonna have to give you a rain check. By this point in the quiz, I was way past relying on my memory of the questions. I was sure I'd never gotten this far as a kid, and so all my subsequent answers would have to be figured out here and now. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna go with talc. The only answer remaining was egg mayonnaise, which could mean one of two things. Either the creator of this quiz really hates mayonnaise, or they eat cardboard. Egg mayonnaise. Why was the answer egg mayonnaise? Task 30. Get the cursor to the end without touching the green. Simple. Right? Ah, it's gonna do something messed up, isn't it? I swear it's gonna do something messed up. It's not gonna be that simple. It's not gonna be that simple. The, the, the words next question are in green as well. The button is green. I, I felt like if I pressed the button, I was gonna lose a lot. I was entirely incorrect. The task was literally as simple as not touching the edges of the tunnel and clicking to the next question. But I was paranoid by this point and couldn't be too careful. Task 31. Woof, 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 or woof, 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 woof. Unfortunately for me, in my celebration of completing the last task, I missed a crucial clue. Did you catch it? The dog barked three times and I had no idea. Which leads to another important lesson from the impossible quiz. Always be ready. With no clue what it wanted from me, I channeled Reese's advice. Deep down, I know the answer. Woof 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 woof. <laughs> Well, so much for that. By random, I clicked on the answer with three woofs. Lucky choice. Question 32. What are the main ingredients of shampoo? This is one of the few that does make sense. What are the main ingredients of shampoo? Baby cham and human feces shampoo. It appears our quiz creator here has a penchant for crude humor. Stay tuned, there's more on that later. Question 33. How many letters in his hand? Well, let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But as usual, the answer is never what it seems. How do we know that hand even belongs to a he? How many letters are in the phrase his hand? This quiz is gonna base it on the text. It's seven. Task 34. Elephants don't like mice. Three elephants 
person in a mouse hole. Elephants don't like mice. Well, clearly I was struggling. Do you know what I need to do? Hint, this is another one of those uh, think outside the box questions. Once I had scoured every inch of the screen to find something clickable and turned up nothing, I was stumped. Oh! <laughs> you have to move the mouse away from the screen. <laughs> this quiz was really taking the piss. Luckily, I found it so amusing, I ended up passing task 35, which required you to wait out the button of doom by accident, and got my third skip in the process. It's probably about time I let you in on those, actually. The arrows are skip buttons, which would allow you to skip certain questions and complete the quiz faster. Or would they? Question 36. What do you call a wingless fly? Sounds like the setup to a classic joke, with a walk being the punchline, but I figured the quiz might have been trying to pull another untitled document on me, and so I chose to call the fly Jason instead. Jason! 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 Unfortunately for me, that trick wasn't being pulled twice. Flipping hell, man. Next time around, I delivered the punchline and progressed to question 37. Can you get this question wrong? It turns out you actually can't. All the answers will allow you to progress, but I chose of course not, and for all subsequent runs, never chose anything else. Power of habit, I guess. Question 38. Mary Rose sat on a pin. What happened next? Well, Mary Rose. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all night. I'll be here all night, ladies and gentlemen. Number 39. We have this toilet roll looking thing and four answers I had no clue about. But because a roll of toilet paper is a cylinder, I decided to go with cylindrical adventures. Good guess, but my reasoning wasn't quite correct. More on this later. Ten questions later, to be exact. Task 40. Click the next question button without touching the pink and in an act of uncharacteristic generosity, the quiz actually gave me a clue. If only you had a bridge. <clears throat> ah, let's go, let's freaking go. Now, before you go thinking I'm a genius, task 41 was gonna prove to be my toughest challenge yet. <laughs> So clearly, it's a duck, and each of its parts were outlined and clickable. But what did it want me to do? Mallard's ass? I was just thinking, because it was kind of hidden, I didn't see that one, so I thought maybe that would be it. Sound logic, but again, logic has nothing to do with it. I received a clue from chat. Which one shouldn't be there? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see many ducks with afros. And I also don't see many afros that look like that. Oh, the afro. Question 42. What is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? I immediately recognized this as a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and was presented with 50 clickable 42s. This would also be the third question to disable the skip buttons. No worries, I didn't need them anyway, because what could the answer be other than the 42nd 42? Question 43. Complete the sentence. Bridget makes everyone gay, straight, bi, or Tom Cruise. I immediately ask the most important question. Who's Bridget? Talking about Bridget Jones? That's right, it is Bridget Jones of the film Bridget Jones's Diary. And then I had a brainwave. Oh, the actress in that film married Tom Cruise. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Correct answer, totally incorrect reasoning. Renee Zellweger and Tom Cruise were never married. At least not really. I got Renee Zellweger confused with Nicole Kidman, who was married to Tom Cruise, but Renee Zellweger's character was married to Tom Cruise's character in Jerry Maguire. Get it? Even if you don't, what does it matter? I got the answer right and was on to task 44, which, uh... Well, I think my reaction says it all, really. What is this? This, it turned out, was a puzzle to be assembled. And assemble it, I did. Problem solved. Ha! <laughs> question 45. Or at least, I think it's a question. It's all in wingdings. Strap in. 
This is the most involved task in the entire quiz. I opened up a Word document, typed out the entire alphabet in both a regular font and wingdings, and got to code cracking. First symbol, the flag. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. I went on to decipher more letters, and somehow during that process, the initial letter O I started with had morphed into the letter N, which resulted in, well, I'll just show you. N. O T A T O What the hell does that mean? Don't ask me mate, you wrote it. It turns out I'd made a fatal error. I hadn't realized that there were two different flags, a squared one for capital O and a pointed one for capital P. It's potato. <laughs> Oh my god. I didn't know there were two different flag types. After a second silly incident where I mistook a lowercase l for a capital I, because who needs serifs, right? I eventually deciphered the phrase. Potatoes fly. <laughs> Potatoes fly. Okay, 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 okay. Potatoes fly. I still don't know what the flip that means. For deciphering the answers, I had an even better approach. I would paste the exact sequence of characters into Word and then simply change the font. This was peak strategy. The potential answers were indeed, wrong, why not, and rolling on the floor laughing. And here was my PhD level reasoning for which one was correct. <sighs> so funnily enough, uh, these do not help. Potatoes do not fly though, so I'm tempted to say wrong. <laughs> that was the longest answer to the question, I think. <laughs> That question alone had taken over 10 minutes to complete, but I was through to question 46, which nothing could have prepared me for. Uh, only four more questions. Yeah, sure, whatever. What is this? What is this? Well, it appears to be two eyes looking at an illustration of a deceased Sonic the Hedgehog's nose being snipped off with a pair of scissors. Eventually, I chose the answer which I felt best encapsulates the emotions of the image. OMGF, you kill Sonicu, you bastard. That question also has an interesting origin, but much like the answer to question 39, we'll get to it in due time. Three questions time, to be exact. Task 47. The screen filled up with a cursor vanishing liquid and I had to click the red button. Considering the cursor is still visible outside the bounds of the game though, this one was fairly straightforward. Question 48. Snake? Snake? SNAKE! It's from Metal Gear Solid. I understood that reference. It's Metal Gear Solid. Question 49. Which is the correct spelling? Slap me do, slap me do, spap me do, splap me do. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about right now? What are you what are you talking about? Slap me do. Fantastic question, mate. Allow me to introduce you to a peculiar fellow called Glenn Rhodes. This is the question I was telling you about, by the way. Don't worry, this whole thing is about to make a lot more sense. Glenn Rhodes is a special kind of guy. In the summer of 2004, just a month away from his 18th birthday, he created an account on an emerging digital art website called deviantart.com. He had also previously been an active member of the Team 17 forums, and if the name Team 17 rings a bell for you, maybe that's because they're the creators of The Escapists, Overcooked, Worms, and more. Glenn was a particularly avid fan of Worms and would frequently post artwork inspired by the games. It seems he had an attraction towards the violent and gory, which is perhaps why the Worms franchise appealed to him so much in the first place. Later in the year, Glenn would get his hands on Macromedia Flash and started experimenting by making short animated movies. Not just content with making animations though, Glenn also wanted to try out the software's scripting abilities. The feature of Flash which led to the creation of so many beloved beloved browser games, and in December of 2004, he published his first ever interactive flash called The Impossible Quiz. Demo. It featured 30 questions, many of which we see in the final version of the quiz, and many of which we don't, with a promise at the end that there would be more to come. But more to come, there wasn't. 
or at least for a while anyway. The version of the impossible quiz we see today wasn't published until February of 2007. So what happened during the over two year period in between? Well, the demo, while being well liked by most who tried it, didn't prove to be particularly popular, only gathering around 2,500 plays by March of 2005 and averaging about 5 plays per day. On top of that, Glenn had originally created the quiz for a new website his school friends were working on, but the site never ended up getting completed and with it the quiz went into limbo. But don't think that means Glenn slowed down. If anything, he started ramping things up. More illustrations, more animations, more interactive flashes, including a create your own worm character customizer and a tutorial on how to properly draw worms as requested by users of the Team17 forums. Glenn would also frequently post on his DeviantArt journal, which he used to update his followers on his personal life and creative endeavors. As 2005 continued, Glenn began posting more non-worms related artwork and even started working on his own original characters. Spider Monkey, the poo slinging hero, anyone? Other original creations of his included the Flovermites and Spatulons, Dennis the Square Tomato, Cylindrical Adventures, and Badly Drawn Dog, with his signature catchphrase, Woof! 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 During this time, Glenn also continued making art dedicated to his favorite franchises, including The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Katamari, and Sonic the Hedgehog. By the way, his Sonic animation ruffled the feathers of quite a few hardcore fans of the Hedgehog on Newgrounds. But then, in January of 2007, something happened. Glenn had noticed that the demo for his abandoned quiz game had actually gotten quite popular. Despite the lackluster initial launch, two years later the game had racked up a decent number of total plays and he was getting a lot of requests to finish it. But Glenn wanted to do more than just finish it. With over two years of additional experience under his belt, he figured he could completely recreate the quiz to be much better than the demo. He planned to include lives and power-ups in this version, as well as adding way more questions. To pull this off, he sought out the help of the DeviantArt community, asking his followers in a journal post to send him ideas for questions, and a month later, on the 20th of February 2007, he posted the completed version of The Impossible Quiz. This version of the game, dubbed The Impossible Quiz Deluxe, featured the life system, the skip buttons, and an overall more polished design. Most impressively to me though, it was now filled with cameos and references to Glenn's previous work, his interests, and various musings he's posted to the internet over the years. This was more than just a game designed to frustrate and annoy random players. This quiz was the culmination of Glenn's years of creating stuff and putting it out there for the world to see. This was one for the fans, and no one was a bigger fan than Glenn himself. He wore his influences and inspirations on his sleeve and proudly displayed them online for years. This quiz would be no different. And 15 years later, this quiz was kicking my ass. Now, unless you happen to have your eyes closed for that entire sequence, you should now know that the answer is Splap Me Do, Glenn's online username or just Splap for short. According to an answer guide Splap himself provided a week after publishing the quiz, this question was created in response to people who would frequently mistake his username for Slap Me Do. And I'll tell you right now, if he has a problem with that, he's really gonna hate what I call him later. Task 50 gave me a series of colors to remember, as well as a sequence of numbers adding up to 108. I didn't write them down and neither should you. Try and see if you can remember. But why? Why do I need to remember this? Don't ask questions, just do it. Okay. Number 51, fight. It took me a moment, but all I had to do was click the screen to make the Spatulon and Flovermite fight. The Spatulon wins, by the way. Splap always liked them better. Number 52, carrot. I assumed I had to pick the leaves belonging to the carrot and I was right, but would I be right in my selection? Okay, the carrot, uh, this is the carrot. Oh, F you. Which one do you think it is? If you chose this, you'd be incorrect. It's actually this one. Don't worry, I'll show you what the second one was later. 53, a jar of Marmite. You know what they say, you either love it or you hate it. A phrase you might be less familiar with though is Marmite but Parmite not. 
I love that, that's funny. Question 54. Shanghai? Well, while Shanghai is indeed the most populous city in China, I don't think that knowledge is going to be much help here. Never been, why is there a question mark? No, about 20 centimeters off the ground. <laughs> oh, what is in the digestive system? A series of all decided to break down. Excuse my panic, it's just that this would be the first question to introduce a timer. And what I didn't know then was that if it reaches zero, it doesn't matter how many lives you have left, it's game over. Not that it made much of a difference to me, I had one life left anyway. The freaking timer pressured me. And it was that pressure which led me to make a fatal mistake. I went with the obvious answer. And as we know, if the answer seems obvious, it's the wrong answer. At this point, I was beginning to question my ability. Am I actually even gonna beat this quiz? I don't think I'm gonna do it, to be honest. <laughs> I'll try my best. Hey, that's all any of us can do, man. Back to 55. The answer is a games console for whole meal biscuits, in reference to the popular British biscuit, Digestives. For anyone who's not familiar, Believe me, they're much tastier than the name suggests. Task 56. The curse of vanishing liquid once again filled up the screen, but it seems the formula wasn't quite as potent this time around. Lucky me. There's an important question to ask though. Did you remember? I was wondering when the colors from Task 50 were going to show up again. Frankly, I was surprised to see them so soon. Task 57. Look, Count Dracula. Count him. <laughs> Say no more, boss. One. Question 58. On the subject of Dracula, ooh, getting fancy linking questions together now, I see. What is his favorite food? Blood, urine, chicken chow mein, or shepherd's pie? Frankly, I think I did an excellent job with the reasoning on this one. Blood is a drink, not food. Same for urine. Chicken chow mein is pretty good. The person who made this is British, so I guess they're gonna go with shepherd's pie. <laughs> Charge up your laser. Ah, do it! Hurry up! Hurry up! No, 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 no. <laughs> Flipping hell. Always be ready. Task 59 required me to rapidly click the mouse to charge the laser. I realized this far too late. Those bombs just being an instant game over is evil. Like, legit evil. Agreed, but what are you gonna do? Get on with it. Back to 59, and this time around, I was tapping left click like my life depended on it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo! Let's go! Question 60. Be honest. Did you manage to do the last question on your first go? No need to ask me to be honest. I'll tell you the truth. No. You liar, I'm sorry, but there's no place for lies in this quiz. <laughs> Yo, who made this game, man? Who made this game? I need to talk to him. I need to talk to him real quick. No, no, not on some violent stuff. Just, I just need to talk to him real quick. You know what I mean? Like, who made this game? <laughs> like, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Well, according to Splap, the game wanted the truth. The correct answer actually depends on if you passed task 59 on your first try. But even more than that, according to the guide, if you fail the shoop the whoop question at any time, this thing's called a shoop the whoop by the way, the answer will be no. I failed the first time and I selected no. And I still got a game over. Once I reached question 60 again, I lied and selected yes and progressed. So I guess honesty isn't the best policy after all. Question 61 just showed the letter Y between brackets. Now, this might not mean much to most, but if you were a user of MSN Messenger back in the day, you know exactly what the answer is. If you typed brackets and then Y into MSN, it would give you a thumbs up. <laughs> Damn, that's a throwback. Holy crap. Task 52. It's simple. Click the moth. Well, if you've got a bit of a lisp, you might be trying to say something else. The moss, not the moth, the moss. Because it's Mike Tyson speaking. Sorry, Mike, I didn't mean anything by it. I swear. Like, please don't, please don't beat me up. Question 63. 
What are chicken McNuggets made of? I went for 100% chicken, taking a more ironic angle, but it seems Splap has a more personal vendetta against the fast food franchise. Tasteless white filth. Question 64. Which is true? The PSP is greater than the DS, the DS is greater than the PSP, the PSP and DS are equal, or Egg is greater than 28. Now, if you ask me, while the PSP was a fantastic device, nothing beats the memories I have of playing on my Nintendo DS back in the day. But this quiz wasn't about me, and only one answer seemed to follow true impossible quiz form. Egg is greater than 28. Let's freaking go. As for the reason why Egg is greater than 28, there isn't one. Splap just says fanboyism equals no good. Task 65. A companion to task 12, which asked me to click the smallest, now I was being asked to click the largest. But unlike last time where I had to click the dotted eye, this time I just had to click the word largest. Hurry up, it's the end of the world. What the flip, man? What? It seems the time pressure had gone to me once again. Do you have any idea what the answer is? Because I sure as hell didn't, even after clicking the two remaining answers and still getting a game over. I feel like I clicked on every answer. Oh my God. This game is gonna give me a heart attack, man. Like, <laughs> no need to be dramatic. Perhaps the third time will be the charm. Oh my God. I pressed every answer already. Ew, what the flip is this? We'll get back to this in a second. Did you catch what happened on that last question? Cause I didn't at the time. It turns out at the end of the world was an exclamation point, which I ended up clicking by accident. Glenn, you sneaky bugger. Question 67, and we're presented with this sight for sore eyes. I wish I could say this was the worst thing we'd be seeing in this quiz, but that's just not true. What I can say is it's like a big hairy ass on ist. What? It's a cat, mate. Oh, I have to pet the cat. Oh my god. <laughs> Question 69. Are you enjoying the quiz? At first, I decided to answer honestly. Not really. Then dishonestly. Then really dishonestly. The answer was obviously LOL69, because this quiz was made by a teenager. Sorry, what? He, he was 20 when he made this? My dog has got no nose. How does it smell? Like piss. Game over, number 19. Uh, here we go again. Listen, we're, we're in here now. We've got we've to get to the end. We've got to get to the end. I had been fully entrapped by the sunk cost fallacy. And as you'll see, I wasn't going to be free anytime soon. Having to restart the quiz from scratch every time was beginning to take its toll on me. I wish there was just an easy way to get to like the last question you got incorrectly. <laughs> This is like torture, having to do all of it over again. In the very least, redoing the quiz so many times allowed me to understand questions I'd previously just gotten lucky on. Oh, the exclamation, at <laughs> the end of the world is the exclamation point. I just freaking got that, that's a bull crap, man. I was finally back to question 70 and lost one more life before landing on the only answer left, using its anus. Because of course that would make the dog smell, wouldn't it? Task 71 was a simple test of timing, and I got it first try. Task 72, however, 
was a much more complicated affair. I had to search. For what? Once again, I did not know. I scanned every inch of the screen, waiting for the point at which my cursor would turn from the arrow to the hand. In actuality, it happened multiple times, but the area was so small I hadn't noticed and the chat had to inform me I had already gone over it at least three times. You found it three times? It's small on the left side. After almost two minutes of searching, I found it. I've been watching my- Oh! Oh! F you. <laughs> Sorry little Lima, you didn't deserve that. I was frustrated and short on patience for some reason, but I can't imagine why. Question 73. Or should I say, question mark. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. I just have to find the one that's exactly the same shape as this one, and it's this one. Light work. Question 74. How many questions does this quiz have? Well, 100, of course. Uh-oh. The answer was, no one knows that. But if there were more than 100 questions, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to beat this quiz. I'd already been streaming for well over two hours by this point, and I wasn't planning on staying live much longer. Task 75, be prepared. I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about it. Don't worry, I'll do it for you. You weren't prepared. Remember, always be ready. Two ways in general that a game can be really hard is if it requires a lot of skill to progress or if the game is incredibly unforgiving as far as checkpoints. Those are two ways games can be really hard. <laughs> this is the latter. Beautiful insight, man. I hope that thinking helps you feel better about your failure. The next time around, I was ready for task 75 and moved on to 76, which comprised of the text, you are my candy girl, accompanied by a bag of sugar and jars of jam, marmalade, and honey. I'm not gonna lie, I was stumped, and after clicking around aimlessly, I lost all my lives. Once again, I got an assist from the chat on this one. The song. How does- what's the song? You are my candy girl. Wait, wait, let me try and- Is that the one that goes- dun, 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 My honey, honey, dun, 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 dun. You are my candy girl. Oh, that's the song. I had cracked it. Thankfully, I remembered the song from an old episode of The Simpsons. I think it was Homer having a dream about food coming to life and dancing and singing. Sugar, honey, honey. For question 77, we have this bag embroidered with the letter T, but what is this? Well, I'll tell you right now, it's not a tea bag. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, maybe it's not a bag at all. Perhaps Mr. T's oven glove? Oh, God. It's 10.23. Oh, God. <laughs> I need to go to bed, man. I'm so tired of this. I was clearly getting disillusioned and needed a target to vent my frustration towards. I can't believe this game. I actually cannot believe this game. What monster made this? Like... <laughs> like, who are you, bro? Like, why did you do this? <laughs> oh, shall I retell the story? I returned to question 77, the answer to which was question 77. Aw, oh, splap you. <laughs> question 78 was deja vu, with the answers for 100, Sillet Bang, and plus one life. What? These are like, what? So clearly I was a bit lost. See if you can figure it out before I do. Was one of these a correct answer at some point? Because I know plus one life, Sillet Bang, and 100 were definitely not correct answers. But I don't know if four was a correct answer. Like, what question would four have been an answer to? Oh my god, I'm gonna lose. Deja vu means already seen. Like, are you seeing again? Oh! <laughs> Let's go! Good for me, but it doesn't bode well for my memory, considering four was the answer to the very first question in the quiz, a question which I was well acquainted with by this point. 79, and it's a timed one. The answer is a horseshoe. 
Don't F with me, man. F with me, it did. The impossible quiz cannot be bossed around and it cannot be reasoned with. I was beginning to break down and even found previously simple questions difficult. Where is it? <laughs> I'm tired, man. I'm freaking tired. To make matters worse, my viewers weren't helping much either. My battery's dying and I won't finish the stream, but I think I don't think you will too. Bruh, alright, hat man. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Gotta love an audience that believes in you. Still, I trudged on and found myself at question 79 once again with three lives at my disposal so I could exhaust all options. Not that it would mean much. A horseshoe. I clicked on every answer. I, c I clicked on every answer. This far in the quiz and this late at night, my enthusiasm was shot. I made my way through the next questions without uttering a single word and could feel my brain slowing down with each passing minute. On task 51, I absentmindedly didn't stop clicking once the fight was over and ended up accidentally choosing the wrong carrot top. Ah, I didn't stop <laughs> Well, I did say I'd show you what the second one looked like. Here's the fourth one as well, in case you wanted to see that too. Eventually, I made my way back to question 79, but was still clueless. A oh, freaking horseshoe. The answer is a 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 horseshoe. Ah, oh, crap. What is it? <laughs> I was not going to figure this out alone, especially not with that bomb ticking. It was time to look to the chat for help. I just need more time. The answer is U. Where is the letter U? Where's the letter U? The answer is a horseshoe. Where is the letter U? Do I have to type U in my, in my keyboard? Where is the letter U? The letter U is in one of the answers. I thought I selected every answer. Three minutes later, I was back to question 79, accompanied by a significant lack of enthusiasm. The letter U. Oh, oh, flipping hell. F you, man. F you, man. I may have been saying F you, but in my heart, I was saying thank you, thank you to my chat for the answer. Question 80. Complete the sentence. Sell your liver to filthy Romanians. Damn. And a racist, not gonna lie. Satan and Frank. 4chan for the lols. Okay, so we're definitely getting some edgy 4chan humor coming through here. After two failed guesses and my 28th game over, I decided it was time to put a stop to things. We're gonna do it one more time and then it's over. We're doing it one more time. The stream had reached its limit. I was gonna give it one final attempt and then try again the next day. Back to question 80. So you live it to filthy Romanians? What the flip? <laughs> Where does that come from? Well, Splap's guide didn't provide any wisdom, but according to the wiki, Romania was known to have the highest rate of hepatitis at the time. Apparently. I mean, surely that's no reason to call them filthy. I felt filthy just clicking on it. Task 81, and I'm presented with a pole in a dark field. What do you want from me? I clicked around looking for something that could help me advance, but nothing worked. Two minutes later, I was convinced I was going crazy. Oh, I could click on something. Am I imagining things or was there something I could click on here? I thought, I think I might be losing my mind. I think I might be losing my mind. I thought there was something there I could click on. I might be losing it actually, yeah. Uh, I'm going crazy. In an act of desperation, I looked to the chat where I read a simple, but questionable instruction. Jerk it. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate that you said jerk it as well. I hate that. <laughs> I freaking hate that you said that. Why'd you have to put it that way? <laughs> For task 82, I was presented with a what? five second timer and 10 toes. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, just in time. I guess you could say I cut it close. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here on that, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'll be here on that. Question 83. What does DNA stand for? Now, I knew the answer was deoxyribonucleic acid, but by now I finally understood that with the impossible quiz, the answer is never what it seems. Do not abbreviate DORMAT, Nice Abacus, National Dyslexic Association. Freaking knew it. Task 84 was more of an accuracy challenge where I'd have to avoid my cursor touching the asteroids and edges while collecting the skips and touching the shooting star. I lost two lives, but on my third attempt, I made it through. Whew. What can I say? I'm a pro gamer. Question 85. Did you enjoy the last question? I hate this quiz. I hate this freaking quiz. Now I didn't trust the quiz to honor my true thoughts on it, so I chose the only answer which actually referenced the last question. Space is a disgrace. It was now pretty late at night and time to end the stream, but not before being clowned on by chat one last time. Never thought you were the type to type of guy to rage quit, but I guess I'm wrong. Don't do this to me, Reese. Don't freaking do this to me. I also appeared to suffer a minor mental break. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Anyway, let me give you guys a heads up. <laughs> You know what, it's probably for the best I decided to end things there, but don't you worry, I was back the next day. Yesterday, I tried playing the impossible quiz and um, it turns out that quiz really do be impossible. AJ saying imagine you actually beat it, imagine, you ain't gonna have to imagine, you're just gonna have to wait, cause it's gonna happen. Bold words for someone who's two hours into what was supposed to be a 20 minute playthrough. I returned to question 85, lost a life by being overly honest with my feelings, and then conceded to saying I loved it. Trust me, it was through gritted teeth. Question 86. I'm green and have sticky balls. Who am I? At first I thought of a sweaty Incredible Hulk, unfortunately that was not right. My second guess would be correct, but not for the reason I thought. Who is Slippy Toad? The Prince. Okay, the Prince. Oh, is it like the Frog Prince? Huh. No. It turns out it's actually a reference to The Prince from Katamari, a game where you roll over objects with a sticky ball. That's actually much better. I wouldn't want to think about the Frog Prince's sticky balls anyway. 87. Click what's missing from this question. A question mark. All right, we go again, we go again. Silly me, I failed to notice that question 87 is in fact not a question at all. Click what's missing from this question. Nothing. A point. An answer. All right, obviously I was missing something. Or should I say something was missing? Have you seen it yet? Here's a clue. What has every other question had so far that this one doesn't? Is it? Ah, you bum. What is this? What? What did you want me to do? What did you want me to do? Well, I was on the right track at least. It just wanted me to keep clicking rapidly. Same as with task 59. Although with a significantly more disturbing end. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ew, what the flip? That's actually the second time I've had that reaction to this quiz. Question 89. What magical property do dog eggs contain? Dog eggs? <laughs> Trust me, bro, I'm thinking the same thing. I had no idea what dog eggs could mean, so I started playing around with the phrase to see if there was a hidden alternative meaning in there. Dog eggs. Dog eggs. 
the gags. The gags. The gags. Do the gags. Dodo gags. Okay, so clearly that wasn't working. Next, I made the fatal mistake of trying to apply some kind of logic. Oodles sounds like poodles. Eternal youth because it's an egg. Invincibility, because blindness isn't a magical property. Oh my god. I mean, you gotta at least respect the attempt. So yeah, the answer was blindness. But before I can even get into why, I have to explain what the hell dog eggs are. So let's take it back to 2005. Channel 4 airs a show called The Best and Worst Places to Live in the UK, in which it ranks Hull as the number one worst. Now Hull happens to be the hometown of our guy Splap over here, and suffice to say, he was not happy. In fact, the day after the show aired, he posted a journal to his DeviantArt page arguing against the show and its claims about his city. He especially had a problem with how the show portrayed Hull visually, referring to a shot they used of a pile of dog crap in the middle of a street, to which Splap says, you can go practically anywhere in the world and find dog eggs on the floor, not just in Hull. Dog eggs. He's talking about dog poo. Okay, great. Now we know what dog eggs are. Why do they contain the magical property of blindness? Well, according to Splap's guide, dog poo can make you go blind if you smear it in your face. I really hate this quiz. Question 90. How many times has Michael Jackson had a nose job? Thrice, twice, once, or nonce? I was able to answer the question immediately. And you know what? I'm gonna just go ahead and not explain that one. Question 91. Dear Impossible Quiz Player, allow me to give you a bit of advice on this question. The answer to this question is, of course, painfully simple, but by the time you have used your eyes to read this lovely letter, a bomb will have most likely appeared in the top right corner, counting down to your doom. Oh, well, good luck. Best wishes, Splap. Now, that's how I wish reading it would have gone. In reality, it went more like this. Dear Impossible Quiz Player, allow me to give you a bit- Oh, the answer to this question is cool. Oh my god, oh my god, uh, okay. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Annoyingly, the letter doesn't give any clues as to how to pass the task. And so even when I finished reading it the second time around, I still had to resort to aimless clicking, which actually seems to reveal the true strategy. They just want me to tap on it? Really? Yes, really. In fact, I didn't even need to tap. I just needed to move my cursor from the left side of the paper to the right. <laughs> Task 92, descending. Hmm, what could that mean? Nine, no, no. Well, at least I figured it out. I had to click on all the numbers in descending order, but in order to see the numbers, I'd have to hover my cursor over them and all with the timer counting down. Also, if I misclicked at any point, I'd have to start over from the beginning. Three, 20. Flipping hell. <laughs> oh God. This task turned out to be so tedious on my fourth attempt at it, I did the unthinkable. Okay, all right, do it properly, do it properly, mate, do it properly. Skip. Oh my God! Bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. Look here! Look, listen! You're ripping my lips, you're ruining it! You're ruining it! God damn! Hey, calm down. 
I wasn't planning on skipping my way through hardship entirely, I had simply developed a new strategy. Having to start over from the beginning each time I got a game over was a real time sink. To put it into perspective, I had been streaming for an hour and a half at this point and had only made 7 questions progress, compared to the 73 questions during the first 90 minutes of the previous stream. Starting over each time was a lengthy process, not only because of how long it took for me to make my way all the way back to the latest question, but also because I was still prone to making mistakes along the way which would result in me having to start over even before I reached the latest question. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, I forgot, I forgot. Skipping timed questions would at least give me the chance to see future questions and begin to familiarize myself with them. And with all that said, Task 93. I was presented with Splat's worm customizer and figured I'd have to assemble the right outfit for it before the timer ran out. I had no clue where to begin though, so I just skipped once again. Task 94. A bomb, the phrase stop it, and a detonate button. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, you stop it. I think it's time for another skip. Okay, skip, skip. Task 95. Another cat. And how nice of the game to give me a break from all the timers. <laughs> well, break over, I guess. What do you get if you put a number one into your calculator and then add a number two? Twelve. Skip. Okay, how many times have you had to restart? None. Just so I could see the questions, just so I could see the questions. How would my new strategy fare? I had seen the questions, but now needed to get the cogs turning to figure out the answers. I think I understood some of them. I understood like some of what I needed to do there, but there will definitely be some that I'm not sure on. Why did they all have timers though? Like what's, what's up with that? <laughs> Buddy, I am asking myself the same thing. After using skips on the previous two tasks, I reached task 94 once again. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Well, I can't imagine what else clicking detonate on a bomb was supposed to do, but it was the only thing I could have clicked on, so I had no idea what it wanted from me. By now, you might have guessed it. I wouldn't until next time. Back to task 92. Would I finally pull it off? 14, 9, 3, 2.5, 1, 0.4. Oh, finally! Finally! Who are you? Go away! I wanna see you. Well, maybe I should have been a little nicer because that's another of Splap's creations. The planet Mars singing a song from his favorite band, The Flaming Lips. It was probably muted on the website due to copyright reasons, but no worries. The Bell of Victory was music enough to my ears. For Tang. Ugh. Beautiful. Back to task 93, and I had no idea what the correct combination could be. Character customization never was my strong suit. I played as default Shepard in Mass Effect. What do I do? What do I do? What do I. What? What is that, man? <laughs> I looked to my chat for guidance, and it was suggested that my thinking was all wrong. If you wanted to hide something on the question, where would you put it? All right, you probably put it underneath all those clothes. So yeah, I probably have to move all of the clothes. Hmm. At least I was thinking in the right direction. Okay, okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on, hide something. The bomb! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, let's, okay. I know how to beat it now. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. We know. We know. We know. We freaking know. Another reminder. Nothing is off limits in this quiz. It was just a last minute thought. I was like, they wouldn't. And then I was like, nah, they would. <laughs> Next time around, I handled task 93 like light work and was on to task 94. Did you guess what was required, by the way? Dude. There's nothing here. Okay, let me just see. Dud. Oh, flipping hell. I was thinking that might be it, you know. Patience. Patience was the missing ingredient. 
Did I mention I hate this quiz? The disappearing cat once again disappeared and I was back to question 96. Frankly, considering the potty humor present throughout the quiz, it should have been obvious from the jump. What do you do if you get number one in your cochlear and then put number two? <sighs> one in your cochlear. Oh, right, miss. How many times have you had to restart? Well, the truth is, this was my 52nd attempt, but the truth hadn't served me well so far, so I lied. Six to nine times. One to five times. Ten plus times. So I guess honesty is sometimes the best policy? There is no consistency here whatsoever. Question 98. Can you still remember? I did. Did you? B. R. B. Y. I turned it into an abbreviation to make it easier for myself. Task 99. Next question. 14. Two and a half. What? Do I have to wait for the light to turn green? Maybe I have to wait for the light to turn green before I click on next question. Of course you do. Running a red light is illegal. Duh. With the end so near, I was more focused on beating this game than anything else. And this left me vulnerable to tricks from my lovely chat. Simi, have you seen the Dev Hour podcast from the Apex Creators? The one about uh, behind the scenes game stuff. Oh, I haven't heard of that. That's interesting. Devour these nuts. Did I say devour? Flipping hell. <laughs> Quincy, that was excellent. That was excellent. Jokes aside, I was back at task 99 and this time I knew what to do. Okay, just wait for it to go green. Question 100. How many holes in two polos? Well, I figured following the same logic as question one, the answer should also be four. But even 100 questions later, I apparently still did not understand. Logic has nothing to do with the impossible quiz. I'm gonna go with four, don't kill me. As I made my way back to question 100, many in the chat were insisting the answer was three, but my friend Reese suggested otherwise. His theory was that since the British polo mints had a hole in them, two polos would have two holes. So who to trust? My Twitch chat or one of my best friends of over 10 years? Three. It's not even three. It's not even three. I chose incorrectly. When I attempted question 100 for the third time, I finally got it right. And it turns out Reese's reasoning was actually spot on. But as previously hinted, this game does not end at question 100. There are 10 more challenges called the Epic 10 that must be overcome first. I was already over two hours into the stream at this point and looking to wrap things up soon but not before beating this damn quiz. Task 101. I was presented with a picture of a dog in a sombrero and a keyboard layout. Admittedly, I might have been overthinking it. Qwerty youp astif What? What do you want from me? Is there one out of place? Is there one out of place? I think there was one that was out of place. I didn't know which one it was. Spoiler, there wasn't one out of place. It was just a keyboard layout, but a callback joke from the chat would get me on the right track. Chris saying horse. <laughs> oh, it was a picture of a dog. Maybe I should type dog, yeah. Getting warmer. Or maybe they want me to spell chihuahua. Now I think you might be onto something. Please, that, just tell me that's it. Just tell me that's it. Just tell me that's it. Yes, okay, you spell chihuahua. Touch the dots before they disappear. No! Okay, I get another chance. Oh, it was too, that was too quick for me. I was proving to not be much of a pro gamer after all, but you know what they say, third time's the charm. Oh, 
yeah, sorry to bait you like that, but um, hey, wasn't it exciting when you thought I was gonna make it for a second? No worries though, because five minutes later, I was back and passed it first time. Did someone say phase time ago? No! Task 103. The vanishing liquid was back and more potent than ever, because not only could I not see my cursor, I couldn't even see the thing I was meant to click on. Huh? No! No, 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 What is that? What is that? I just have to, I just have to find where it is and I don't even get my mouse. This game, they don't want to see you in. They don't want to see you in, man. At the time, I probably would have called that the most unfair task in the quiz. But now being in the future and knowing what awaited me on task 106, it's not even close. Are we really going to be in here next week doing this same game? No, 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 we can't let that happen. Did you say next week? Well, yeah, this was taking place on a Friday. I'd already gone past my usual stream length and I don't go live on weekends. So if I didn't beat this right then, it'd have to wait till Monday. But with only eight questions left to go, the thought of dedicating another stream to this game was unfathomable. Once again, task 103. I tried right-clicking so I could locate my mouse within the screen, but it didn't help much without knowing what I needed to find. Oh, flipping hell. Flipping hell, man. Oh, God. How? Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> it was insisted that the thing I was looking for was under the sea. No, not that one. So I chose to put my faith in the chat once more. Under the sea, under the sea, right here, right here. Come on, come on, come on, you see it right here. Flipping hell, man, really? <laughs> God damn it. I had apparently been under the sea roll. After almost 25 minutes on task 103 alone, I decided to make this my last attempt of the night. I was well over my allotted stream time and could once again feel my brain fading. My chat informed me that it was somewhere in the bottom right quadrant, and I would have one last chance to find whatever it was I was looking for. Okay, okay, so you're saying here. Uh, ah, oh my god! <laughs> Let's go! I had managed to pull off a clutch play at the last moment, but my celebrations would have to be cut short because once again, I was on the clock. <gasps> oh, don't click the small happy, the small yellow happy sun. Small yellow happy sun. Wait, why had I gotten that wrong? My thinking was that it wanted me to click on the object with the opposite description. So don't click on small, don't click on yellow, don't click on happy and don't click on sun, leaving the big gray unhappy moon. But this had been incorrect. The only thing I could think of was that yellow was the only property without a clear opposite. And it's not like there was a purple moon I could click on anyway. Some color theory for you there. So that would mean I needed to click on the big yellow unhappy moon, but I wouldn't discover if my hypothesis was correct until after the weekend. I can't believe that for two streams in a row, I have played the impossible quiz. Well, believe it. I'll see you on Monday. People, people, here's what is the deal. We will be beating the impossible quiz. Watch that boss. Do the opposite, do the opposite, do the opposite. Let's freaking go, there we go. My theory had proven to be correct, but now I had a new problem. Question 105. What is this? It's a bond and a knife! That's what I was thinking, but it wasn't any of the options, so I just guessed. Next read, Apple. Neither was correct, obviously.
because it's a banana. So when I returned to the question five minutes later, I knew I'd have to try something else. Huh? Oh, what? I did that by accident. The end? What? What? It was the wrong end or something? Precisely. You see, what happened was I intended to click on Gooseberry, but luckily for me, I accidentally stumbled upon the strategy for answering the question by clicking on the letter B specifically. The trick is to spell the word banana using the letters in the answers. But in true impossible quiz fashion, not all letters are accepted. Two more failed attempts later, and I finally had it down. All right, banana. Oh no. Banana, banana, come on, come on. All right, B, A, N, A, N, A. <sighs> and this brings us to task 106, also known as the most unfair task in the entirety of the impossible quiz. The idea of the task is simple. Keep the cursor on the road as it moves. But I was about to encounter something that would make things significantly less simple. Is this about to go what? Oh, 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 Did you catch what happened there? This task would be fairly straightforward if the screen moved at a constant pace, but I was experiencing screen stutters, only adding to the level of difficulty. I wish I could say that was the most unfair aspect of this task though, because what I would later discover would render the impossible quiz literally impossible to beat. Over the course of two more failed attempts, including one where I moved my cursor off the road immediately, there's gonna be one. I realized I'd have to take one of three branching paths to reach the end. After a few more failed attempts, partially due to screen stutter, it glitched. It freaking glitched. And partially due to my own ineptitude, What? Oh! <laughs> I decided to skip 106 and come back to it later. By this point, I had been trying to get past task 106 for almost an entire hour. And based on what I would later discover, it was not worth it. Oh my God, it was not worth it. Okay, now let's just see what question 170. How do you do? How do you do? What? There was no timer! There was no timer! What? What? <laughs> I had been absolutely bamboozled. Question 107 was a fake out designed to confuse and disorient the player, and confused and disoriented, I was. What happened? What happened? The code is lost. The code is lost. System failure. The code is lost. I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. I was so, that whole sequence, that whole sequence ruined me. Yeah, we saw. I was still so stunned by the previous question, I didn't even have time to process this one, but I now had to get thinking and figure out what it wanted from me. You had to speak in leet. Interesting theory from chat there. Perhaps I had to type the word lost in leet speak, which would translate to 1057. But on my way to try it out, a new idea emerged. Obviously I don't know what 109, 110 are, but I mean, I still haven't had the question where I need to remember those numbers. You know what I mean? The 108 thing. I still haven't had that question. So, like I imagine that'll be something to do with it. So I'm holding out. You know, those numbers right there, I imagine something. Wait, that was question 108. That was question 108. Wait, so it wants me to do something with those numbers? Oh crap, I know what I need to do. <laughs> Holy crap! It's nothing to do with Lee speak. It's nothing to do with Lee speak. It's that question. Bye, George. I think he's got it. I skipped 106, endured the fake out of 107, and was back to 108 once again. 
It's worth noting, at this point I was well past my allotted stream time, but with only a couple of questions left, it couldn't take too much longer. Right? Four. Eight. Oh, I have to ex I have to press execute. Four plus eight. Okay, okay. I think I just have to keep clicking that one. I think that's just a keep clicking. I felt I had a solid grasp on what was required for both 108 and 109, so I skipped to the final question, upon which I was greeted by this message. Okay, so this is the last question. It is potentially the easiest question there is, or your worst nightmare, depending on how you've played the quiz. Use your skips. Okay. Cool. That's all it is. Okay, 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 okay. I know what to do. You might be surprised by how unfazed I was by Splap's final dirty trick, requiring that the player have all seven skips available by the end of the game in order to beat it. But I was ready. If you recall from earlier, my strategy was to use the skips only so I could get past timers and see future questions. I had no intention of using the skips in the winning playthrough. On top of that, my chat insisted that I keep my skips till the end, stating that I would need them. And while my chat has been wrong many, many times, sometimes they get it right. If you think this is the dirtiest trick this game could pull though, you really have no idea. Remember task 106? How about we get back to that? <sighs> Come on. What? 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 If you're confused, so am I. I had finally made it. A yellow arrow appeared on screen for a fraction of a second, and then I got a game over. I couldn't believe it, but I was determined to beat this game before 11 p.m., so I tried again. What? What? What do you want? And I tried again. Alright, we're just gonna stay here. We're just gonna stay here. And I tried again. What does it want me to do? What does it want me to do, bro? Oh my god, I've done everything at this point. I've done everything at this point. What does it want me to do? I had become completely disillusioned. Honestly? forget this game man this game is evil this game really is just not good for you like this is a vice you should not play this game really it's you know whoever designed this spap the fap or whatever the hell your name is you need to seek therapy because this is not all right what you what you're doing you know what i mean it's not okay um you're deeply troubled and I don't wish for the best for you, honestly. Frankly, I don't think my salt levels have ever been higher. What on earth, man? This game is so rigged, it's unbelievable. It's so rigged, man. It's rigged. Why am I here at 10 past 11 p.m. playing the impossible quiz, bro? What is this, man? I later came across a chat message from Tom Tom again, suggesting that task 106 was actually glitched on the website and literally couldn't be completed, which in turn would render the entire quiz unbeatable. But I was so used to my chat messing with me at this point that I completely blew him off. Car question is glitched, you literally can't beat it. Tom Tom, shush. <laughs> This is the laughter of a fool. I returned to task 106, and after being cheated for the umpteenth time, I decided it was time for a change. 
Maybe TomTom Tom again was onto something. I left the website and loaded up the original Flash file for the game. Three interesting differences to note about this version when compared to the HTML5 version. One, the original music used in it was back, but it was so annoying, I just muted it myself. Words really could not do justice. How much? I don't want to hear this game. Two, the cat doesn't automatically disappear on task 95 anymore. Instead, you must move the cursor off the screen so the cat jumps away and reveals the button. Am I missing something? <coughs> so that's what... Get out of my face, bro. And three, this game runs way better on Flash. The animations were smoother, the colors were more vibrant, and most importantly, Task 106 actually freaking worked. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? What? Oh. I fell for it again, I fell for it again. Let's just say tensions were high. I was vulnerable. Okay, okay. Uh, four, enter. It was four. It was, it, it began with four. It was four. What? The, it was four plus eight. I needed to do a space, not enter. Yeah, it turns out this was a space bar. I genuinely didn't even see it as a button. No worries though, I had conquered task 106 and knew victory was only moments away. But I also knew I owed someone an apology. Someone in the chat said the game was glitched. And I said, I said stop, cause I thought they were pulling my leg. I apologize to whoever that was. You're trying to help me, I couldn't see. Tom Tom again, <laughs> apology not accepting. It's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 10 minutes later, I was back to task 108. Four, space, eight, space, 15, 16, 23, 42, enter. Let's freaking go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ew! 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 Oh, disgusting. What? 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 What did I- What? I did it in time! What I didn't realize was that I had to click the arrow that the spider monkey pooped out. So forgive me for not paying close attention to the fecal matter being excreted by this abomination. There was a freaking arrow. Are you kidding me? When will this game let me go? Let me go. Let me go, please. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. There were only 15 minutes before midnight, and I had no intention of having the clock strike 12 before I was done. But now I knew exactly what I needed to do for each and every question. So as long as nothing went wrong, the next attempt should end in victory. As long as nothing went wrong. What? I clicked it! I clicked it! I clicked it, man! I freaking clicked it! Yo, Joe, thank you for the raid. You've caught me at a rather stressful time in my life. I was certain! I had clicked on the arrow, but the game had other ideas. There were now just seven minutes before midnight, and with 106 attempts and eight hours of playtime under my belt, if I wanted to beat the game that day, it was literally now or never. I should not still be streaming now, so there are things I have to check on, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe this. My sleep schedule is gonna be 
effed up, man. <laughs> ah, no, it's not going to be that bad. I, I tend to fall asleep pretty easily, but... Like, dude, I still have to eat. You know, I eat after the stream every time. And eating, like, super late at night is, like, not the move, man. Just order McDonald's on stream. Nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are we don't worry mate it's okay you got this chin up yeah <clears throat> come on Come on, come on, get me through this. Let's freaking go, let's freaking go. I can feel my reflexes getting slower. I've been awake too long. <sighs> Come on. <clears throat> Come on, mate. God. Oh my god. Oh, flipping out. Oh. The possible quiz. Oh,